Well, then you two learned a very important lesson today. Cops don't help. strong when you've had a little bit of a vacation and I almost had a break as long as Congress but I think I still work <laughs> more days a week yeah that would be a little bit of a challenge to, to, to well do you have the do you at least have the health insurance coverage that Congress has no oh, that would be socialism Lance you know that <laughs> we can't have that can we <laughs> only for the government Lance only for the government <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this movie and the topics that are around it. So I guess I'll just get the beginning out of the way and we will ride the ride the train to its destination. Welcome back, yeah, everyone. Good. Welcome, Lance, to a new Psycho Semantic cast. First one of 2023. Here we are. We've got a movie. We've got a guest. We've got me. We are doing 2022's horror comedy, I would say, or comedic horror, American Carnage. I think that works, yeah. Horror comedy, comedy horror. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Written and directed by Diego. Ha well, I'm sure that I'm sure that my my uh, oldest daughter could tell you all about him because uh Looks like he was part of additional crew on a movie called Confessions of a Shopaholic, which is actually one of her favorite book series that oh, she's ever really? read. <laughs> I had seen that he, well, he wrote and directed this and I think produced it uh, with somebody with the same last name as him. So I don't know if that's a brother, family member, or romantic partner, but it was produced by right. Diego Haivis. Andres Rosende and Julio Halivis. Now, I don't know if you want... Uh, okay, sorry. Getting way ahead of myself, I was getting ready to talk about the end credits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we tend to move around a lot on the... You, uh, and dude, man, I thought this was a movie podcast, but here we are talking politics. What the fuck's going on here, man? Well, you know, it's my trap <laughs> to get people to talk about my <laughs> obsessions, so I'm not just yelling in my garage by myself yeah we don't we don't want that no don't need to be i almost did a jim brewer joke but he's gone off the deep end has he <laughs> oh yes you're not aware no the yeah. last thing i really remember jim brewer in was uh oh fuck that stoner comedy that he did where uh yeah, half baked. There you go. That that was a that was a good one, man. That was a good heist movie. That uh, speaking of people that have delved into areas of uncertainty with uh, with Dave Chappelle was uh, oh his, yeah in that movie, but uh, Jim Brewer is a pretty frequent Fox News guest now, and his last comedy special is that he just put out like just now or you know this year okay. is all about covid lockdowns and wokeness oh and... no <laughs> God. yeah i haven't followed brewer in a long time yeah you know, frankly i didn't even know he was still active i didn't either until he popped up <laughs> in my the other side of my uh media consumption the news or whatever tv and movies yeah. Very interesting. I mean, it's still it's the same guy, but he's talking about that stuff the way he talked about getting high or sure playing bass. But now it's right. just about right. the other things. I'm going to have to look him up now, man. You're going to have me go down the rabbit hole, aren't you? I think he released his comedy special for free on YouTube. Yeah. Well, there you so. go, man. Socialism at work. <laughs> Uh, but he is not in this movie. He is not in this cast. He is not in this crew. Uh, this was what? 
we sort of came about this movie because you had a general topic that you want that you you felt like uh, we should discuss. Because I mean, it's yeah. always pertinent. Yeah. It's, it's always a uh, how to say. It's always topical, especially in mm -hmm. this country. And Jenna Ortega has sort of just been popping up in what uh, in in my in my viewings lately. I just started watching Wednesday, and mm -hmm. I recently rewatched the new Scream movie. And she's also uh, going to be in the in the upcoming sequel. So uh -huh. she's yeah, she is definitely. We talk about that on the podcast a lot. She's she is the it girl right now, big time when it comes to horror movies. So there was we just sort of came to. I forget which one of us even said it, but Jenna Ortega is in a movie that looks mm -hmm. like it broaches the topic. But this is a first. This was a first time watch for both of us, as far as I'm aware. I know yeah, after uh, I watched yeah. it, I caught up on your podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Lance from The Horror Returns. Welcome. <laughs> and uh, your episode, was it was it your most recent episode? You cover so many current things that sometimes I'm way behind because I don't listen to discussions about the movies I haven't seen. Uh, but somebody recommended this movie to you after we came up with the idea to do it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know Brian. Brian recommended it. He said he uh, he he thought that it would be it would be a movie that I would really get into. And um, I do. Yeah, we could talk about the movie some. I definitely see some similarities with this one and others. Yeah. Um. You know, and some other. Uh, there, there's, there's also sort of like a. Um, I don't know, man. There, there's a lot of things that are that are going on right now that have kind of like always been going on. Like I, I always think of that quote, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Whatever happened to that mindset, man? <laughs> I mean, where did all this uh, xenophobia come from on a country that, well, first of all, we weren't, none of us were the first here, right? We, we, <laughs> We decided to just kind of take over from from the folks that were here before, but uh, you know the idea of of this quote unquote new America, right? Uh, that that's what it's supposed to be. So where where did where did we take a left turn, or right turn, or <laughs> right turn, turn yeah. in Albuquerque or whatever? You know, <laughs> it's just I I don't know. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Maybe just. Talking it out with you, man. We'll come up with a couple of a couple of ideas. Yeah, I know. I know you keep you keep your finger on the pulse of politics, so the rest of us don't always have to, and get super depressed all the time. But uh, <laughs> not it's... not sure how we ended up where we're at right now. Uh, just just kind of boggles my mind a little bit. It's been a dark winter. Speaking of that, but I would say. Uh, there, there are a few things. I, I think one of the things that America was founded on was oppressing the other. I, you talk about, you know, we're broadcasting from stolen land right now. And Absolutely, yeah. Then there were the hundreds of years of slavery. Then there's Jim Crow laws. Then different cities had different things where I, I think – there's always been people that do believe and do want that sort of melting pot. And then there are others who pretend like they do so they can exploit new people. And, you know, instead of traveling overseas to raid the resources of another nation, they have people come here to be exploited to uh, like the uh, fucking guy says in the movie, you know, we're first, you know, we, mm -hmm. we wanted you, we needed you here to do all this shit. And now it's for my right wing sociopathic ass. You are no use to me until I found this use for you. 
And I think that it's always been a good boogeyman for the right wing to have is, and it goes back to a lot, I think, uh, uh, like class, class war, the upper sure. class, the owning class uses immigration and homophobia and all these other things to keep the focus of their supposed supporters punching down instead of looking up at at the the real cause of their misery it's a scapegoat that they're happy to give up and it just replicates itself I, there was um a thing that just broke in the news the last couple days that there is you know the whole homeschooling thing and school choice okay that i don't know if there's a lot of homeschooling or charter schools in texas but there are a decent amount of charter schools in ohio and in other places and often not always but often mm -hmm. they are kind of like a religious loophole to get government funding for a religious type school. And also since they're private entities, you can invest in them and make money off of that. And then tan tangentially tan uh, side, uh, mm -hmm. aside from that or including that there's also things like it just came out and somebody posted about in the podcast discussion group there were these people in Upper Sandusky, Ohio, which is, I think, about five or 6,000 people, that sort of town. Mm -hmm. uh, it's If you want to point somebody towards Upper Sandusky, the closest thing to reference is Cedar Point, uh, the, the amusement park, Cedar Point. But they were running a homeschool, or still are, I'm not sure, uh, homeschool network for Nazis. Jesus Christ. How, how, to, how to teach your child in the way of white nationalism and things, or with a, with a slant. I, I saw... I'm just getting into it, uh, reading about it, so these this is just from two articles. There was something about the the lesson plan about Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement, I think starts with them saying as Adolf Hitler wrote and things like that. Uh, they were using a pseudonyms mm -hmm. there, uh, but uh, uh, an anonymous leftist group traced the traced them to identify them as these real people. But, they, yeah, they were using fake names and had a network of a few thousand people around the country of, like, neo-Nazi homeschool lesson plans. Wow. <laughs> and this is, uh, and this is acceptable how? Yeah. Right. I mean, what do they, they hide under, the, do they hide behind that veil of religious freedom? Is that, like, that, their rationale for this, that, or... That tends to be, yeah, religious freedom, freedom of speech. Okay. It's not over uh, charter schools. Uh, and this goes with the people in government, the theme, a theme in this movie, using it for campaign points because they don't see lower class, of below class of them. Uh, financially, as people, they see them as commodities, mm -hmm. and the currency of political outrage. And I think they discuss uh, they should they illustrate in this movie that it's in aspects it is people that claim to be on both sides of the aisle, as they like to say uh, a little bit here with the, that one lawyer, but. It is. It has long been a right wing scare tactic. As you know, the the immigrants gonna come take your jobs and shit. And um, 
in politics. Uh, sorry, I got away from that point a little bit, like we yeah. do. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a trig it's a triggering mechanism. Yes, that they use it. It distracts from the lack of substance. It keeps you know uh, when when you just need to attack somebody, you don't need to do anything to help people. If all if all of your underlings or constituency wants is for you to hurt somebody else, they forget that you're not helping them or that you're hurting them. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, there's a thing going on right now in my state. The former speaker of the state house is has gone to trial for a 60. So I think accused of taking 61 million dollars in bribes for a hundred and twenty million dollar energy scandal of bailing out coal plants. One of them's not even in Ohio. And uh, it's the largest racketeering case in the state. And it's the former speaker of the house. Holy smoke. <laughs> it is barely wow. getting and talked it, about outside of the state. But and this it, is all just Ohio. <laughs> yeah, that was just Ohio. And the governor, our governor, who is uh, connected to this bribery scandal because the money was set up and given to Larry Householder, or allegedly, as part of a campaign to get him elected speaker of the house to then go on and put forward this bill that would be $120 million. I think it's $120 million bailout for the energy company that gave him the money for his campaign. And then there was money put into blocking a citizens run initiative to undo the legislation. And then all these politicians and energy people were getting uh, uh, arrested and indicted, and he's on trial. But yeah, the governor's connected. He is also on the redistricting committee for our massive gerrymandering that's going on in the state, or that has happened in the state, that has kept... I have, I have heard about that. Okay, so yeah, there's... Uh, politically, there's about a 54 to 46 Republican lead over Democrat voters, but they have something like 80% of the seats because of gerrymandering. And the governor who's involved in the energy scandal and the bribery scandal is on the redistricting committee, also with the Secretary of State that just pushed through one of the most restrictive voter ID laws in the country. And I think it uh, disqualifies overseas military people even if they don't have a current state ID. <laughs> and the governor's son is on the state Supreme Court that was hearing cases about the illegality and violation of the Constitution of the gerrymandering that his father did and did not recuse himself and has not recused himself. Yeah, that's uh, that's a step beyond uh, mere nepotism at that point. That's uh, <laughs> seems like anybody anybody would call that out. Yeah. So I, people are starting to pay a little bit more attention now that Jim Jordan is the head of the House Judiciary Committee and things. But there's there are quite a few lawsuits filed. Mm -hmm. But who the fuck knows? Uh, the 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 network is strong and entrenched, and it's uh, our governor claims to be a moderate, but I believe he has sent. National Guard down to the the border to help um, Greg Abbott and <laughs> you mean you mean Governor Harper Finn? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, did right. You get that? Did you get that vibe as strongly as I did? I he felt very much like a Greg Abbott or Ron DeSantis. Sure. Or you know, I, I I was getting an Arizona vibe from. The okay. all the sun references in the TV networks, uh, the what sun news looked okay. like Fox News, but right, right, it felt mostly like Texas. Yeah, and you know, live live living here in Texas, like I like I am and always have been. You know, ob obviously, you know, border issues are always are always a big a big triggering point on both sides of the of the aisle. You know. 
which it's very ironic considering the fact that most of the people that like you said are kind of dog whistling to you know keep keep those people out you know and keep our country you know white and what it is and the way it was supposed to be the way our founding fathers meant for it to be um and 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 they 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 tend to be the ones that benefit the most from the incredibly cheap labor and um a lot of this business man they they seem to do overseas like in places like china where there's almost no human rights to speak of at all and when they can't uh you know get it done there then you know they're shooting for mexico or these south american countries that are in similar situations and so people come here because they want a better life and unfortunately yeah they get fucked over here just as hard it seems like yeah uh i mean i feel like a common misconception by the idiots and some just generally ignorant people as they oh they don't pay taxes they take all my tax money i believe that immigrants pay the same amount and if you are undocumented but working you pay in but you don't take out you you hit the you hit the nail right on the head because i've got a lot of uh family members that know people pretty intimately and some of who actually work for example my wife's a district manager with you know a company that does you know high end kitchenware cutlery that type of stuff right so she's over all the Texas stores and kind of like, you know, the middle part of the country. And so obviously she deals with a lot of folks that are, you know, undocumented or recently documented, I guess. And so she hears a lot of stories. But basically, you know, they take your money out. But good luck going back and, you know, doing your taxes and and for whatever reason, paying like seven dollars and 50 cents for the year or whatever, like some people do, because they just don't have the same voice. So they're all paying in because the taxes get taken out automatically. The hard part is, you know, when they fill their taxes out, trying to get their refunds back, that's that that's where they run into trouble. Yeah, I, I mean, the, so, yeah, the. The the truth the truth of the matter is from you know from from the best that I can tell you know we're benefiting so much more from people who come into this country that are hungry that actually want a chance and they're willing to sacrifice you know some personal freedoms to be able to make money to take care of their families a lot shit a lot of the money you know they end up sending back home to people you know because there's no jobs available where they're coming from. So I just um, I think it's just very funny the way that 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 people think why you know we want to keep them out because they're stealing our jobs they're stealing our resources when it's the exact opposite you know we're we're getting more value for people that are coming in that are are in an unfortunate situation than we're getting from the people that have been here for their whole life and it just to me seems clear as day and you've got these problems here like. You read all these articles lately. I don't know if you've read that, uh, I guess, for the first time in a thousand years or something or five. Don't 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 misquote me here. I, I, I shouldn't misquote myself, but I know that China's uh, population is actually going down for the first time in a long time. Um, our population is going down other countries. And so I think we're going to get to the point here where you and I, you and I are going to reach a certain age and, you know, we're going to obviously require social security as is everyone else who lives here. That's, that's worked here all their life. And if the population doesn't increase, the, the only way to get that pot bigger is to bring more people in. And I'm not sure why it seems so difficult for people to understand that concept. The money's got to come from somewhere. I mean, well, I, I think that there is a large portion of people in this country who would pull up the rope ladder once it's been handed down to them. They're like, well, there's no room for right. you now that I oh, got yeah. <laughs> now that I got up in the tree. The, yeah, well, got on the last uh, the last door floating off the Titanic, I guess, right? And no, no room for Jack. A lot of Billy Zanes running around, 
pretending to have babies right. so they could get on the get on the life raft. Um, or like Elon Musk, who can't pay taxes because really all of his money is in stocks and stuff. Uh, we also remember when the treatment of migrants, immigrants, and refugees wasn't so brutal, at least out in the open, and that all seemed to change mm -hmm. with the formation of ICE in about 20 years ago. So, still, I still remember about half my life when ICE didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And it was it was nicer. And then the Patriot Act and George W. Bush. Although that fucking hundred mile thing has been around since the nineteen thirties. I don't know if you heard that um ICE's sort of uh jurisdiction is anywhere a hundred miles from the US border. Uh, so they they ha they kind of have their area that they're responsible for, and they're not supposed to work outside of that, kind of like a a district or something like that. Well, they they can work other places, but it's it it's when they have their highest authority. They don't uh, the the Justice Department and ah fuck, what was it called? I think it was the Immigration and Nationality Act, if I remember my okay. reading right just defined the U.S. border um, to operate without a warrant within 100 miles, a reasonable difference, a reasonable distance to not need a warrant to, like, demand people's documentation and other things like that. It was 100 miles from a border, and that is a lot of... Of, I mean, think of all the coastal cities. Sure. I think I think half of Ohio is a hundred miles from the Canadian border. So I'm oh, not sure if I live okay. in or out of it. But, right. You know, I think all of Maine, almost all of Florida, if not most of Florida, except for part of the Panhandle. You know, all the way. Th imagine a. You know how when you're highlighting something and you get a big fat marker line just mm -hmm. trace that around the outskirts of the the country i mean that's all the coastal towns houston is in it um i know you don't live in houston but that's what is that the closest city to you yeah i'm i'm just a little bit north of houston so you know probably pretty close to that to that marker line and so so that's the way everything's set up now ice ice has that much jurisdiction ice allegedly needs no warrant to search and seize okay within a hundred miles of a border which they decided in the 30s and they haven't talked about it Very since bizarre. that was before ice well, existed but it was uh you know part part of the um Justice Department and then what what did they name the, the Bush created the Department of Homeland Security all right well all right so going going further back than that correct correct me if I'm wrong I'm see if I've got my American history correct here so I, I think like at pretty much around the same time that MLK and 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 Malcolm X we're doing their thing. Wasn't that around the same timeline as when uh, Cesar Chavez got really involved in making sure that, you know, undocumented fruit, fruit laborers and people like that actually kind of started having rights and were able to, you know, sort of unionize. Yeah. I and so say... it, it was starting to look better, right. For uh, immigrants and people that were coming in. It was starting. Uh, I did. See, oh man, I had this really cool professor in college that uh, he he was from a immigrant family, 
and mm-hmm. every off season or whatever, he went and worked with kids on a reservation out west. Uh, he talked a lot about Cesar Chavez. I think mm-hmm. the, the what was that the grape strike that went for almost five ten years from the sixties. Whenever it started, it ended in 1970. I remember that. Okay, um, so yeah, so see that was that was the big event that that I that I heard about a lot. Like uh, I remember my mom telling me a lot about that. That he he did a lot for the rights of, you know, people that were either immigrants or maybe kind of you know passing through an area and then going to work in a in a different area, and like they would have seasonal times of the year that they would work and. Basically, I think he helped get a lot of that unionized, which yeah, I'm I'm guessing that uh, in congruence with the rise of ICE 20 years ago or so, that's kind of when we started doing a lot more of the new, the newer union busting type tactics. Yeah, are, the wealthy have always so like crushing now. unions. <laughs> yeah, right. And he he was a Navy veteran. People like to of course. toss oh, that yeah. out there. Yeah, oh. Navy veteran. He helped laborers register to vote. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can't get cheap hamburgers <laughs> if you pay <laughs> living wage. <laughs> can't. I think we, we scared away all the strict strictly movie fans. So... <laughs> gotta gotta at least try to talk a little bit about about the film itself, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, I think in a way, but also in a way, I don't think the movie deserves to be rated yeah. as low as it is. But it's not a movie that requires hours of conversation. I mean, it's yeah, fair fair enough. I mean, the set, I I really truthfully, I thought the setup, like I don't know, the first five or ten minutes of it, where they were talking about you know, what led to the government making this decision and allowing that to happen. I thought, I thought that was kind of a neat little time capsule of stuff that had, that had gone on to kind of bring this about or whatever. And I mean, it's kind of like, don't think it couldn't happen here. Right. Cause this is definitely something that certain governors are trying to push. I mean, when you've got people that come in looking for work and you put them on these buses and tell them, Hey, we got work for you. <laughs> and it, just happens to be, uh, you know, up in these uh, quote unquote, uh, what do you call them? The 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 uh, coastal elite areas and coastal elite states and right. Uh, let's see how you like having to deal with them, you know, for, and for political stunts a, what, and political just, points. Just what a stunt! Yeah, the stunt is the word for it. There's there's no way around it. <laughs> Yeah. And then meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it's, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that uh, the people that are allegedly behind that have plenty of undocumented workers that are doing their gardening, preparing their food, taking care of their children, you know, in, anything that you don't have time to do or don't want to do or is too dirty for you to do or too hard work or time consuming, you know, hey, let's get those uh, darker skinned people on that. Um, cause that's the way that it's supposed to be in this country <laughs> and it's pretty frustrating from the Christians, the, the, well, not all the Christians, but that kind of well, Christian. And we all know that kind of Christian. Sure. That, like we said before, use, uh, a book they've probably never read to <laughs> abuse people they don't know. Yeah, talk talk like your New Testament and behave like your Old Testament. There we go. <laughs> uh, I yeah, I mean, this movie is I this movie is right up my street. You know, I would uh, from for interest and for types of movie that I'm into. I it mm-hmm. got I think it I, I was seeing it rated about half. Where wherever, whatever the level was, mm-hmm. if it was out of five stars or out of ten stars, it sort of averages half. And okay, so 
yeah, that that would that would indicate to me that it's obviously polarizing then, right? Because you've probably got a lot of people on the high end and a lot of people on the low end, and you end up right in the middle. Yeah, there we go. Because it, it is very topical. I mean, it's called American Carnage, which, mm-hmm. if, for those who don't know, I don't know how many times <laughs> it was said in other times, but it was in Donald Trump's inauguration speech. There you go, man. And I had forgotten all about that until they replayed that uh, yeah. quote at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> well, there's Laura Ingram like, accidentally doing her sig hail before waving that everybody said wasn't sure wasn't a thing. Uh, the, the fucking governor. What's his name in the movie? Uh, Harper Finn, his commercial yeah, where he's sure. doing that um, tongue in cheek not a uh, white power okay symbol thing over and over and over again mm-hmm. uh that uh you know it became a thing because well i mean it's it's been seen it's uh you know what i'm talking about right the closed finger with the three fingers up that became a troll that became more of a meaning mm-hmm. the what's his face uh like Kyle Rittenhouse did posed with that at with the Proud Boys, Proud Boys do it, all sorts of other shit, but he kept doing it with the for us, by us commercial and the people without tiki torches, but standing there saying, Remember who we are. Remember who we are. Uh all sorts of yeah, nods to all too realism. Including all of those clips that the movie begins with, which are all sure, sure. news clip, <laughs> just straight off the news. Um, so what did you? I mean, I don't think we need to go point by point through this. So basically, and it's still mm-hmm. pretty new, right? It it came out last year. Yeah, I think. Yep it came it came out last year. Um. I, I'm not sure if it was a uh, what was it a theater release or was it direct to Hulu? Do you know? It had a limited theatrical release, from what I could tell. Okay, it, it wasn't nationwide. Yeah, it was made in Spain. No kidding. That yeah, uh, at least from there's not a whole lot about it. It doesn't have a Wikipedia page or anything, and the okay. the. Imdaba only has a one or two um, trivia bits, but uh, if, from what I saw, it was at least in the end credits. There, it was in partnership with uh, Spanish film industry. Okay, and that and that makes sense because you're kind of getting you're you're kind of getting a look at America from from an outside European perspective. You know, which is which is always good to see, right? Instead of you know someone that's in the country, um, it it kind of buffoons us and lampoons us even more <laughs> when you realize that this was all made in you, uh, or there was a lot of European influence in this. Um, that's interesting, man. I had no idea. Um, I I will say this, and we kind of mentioned it earlier, how you know we we we've, we've got our new our new scream queen going right now with Jenna Ortega. So I'm pretty sure this will get a more of a cult following, you know, the, the longer that she stays active and the more horror horror roles she takes on and stuff like that, because frankly, I probably wouldn't have seen this movie. And I don't really, I mean, I remember hearing about it, but man, it was so far underneath my radar until, you know, Brian mentioned something. And then I think you talked about it and I'm like, yeah, all right, well, let's give it a shot. It it was de- it was definitely not exactly what I was expecting. Um, don't want to get I guess too spoilery here because like you said it's not terribly you know been out too terribly long. But I thought it was going to be more of a thing where they just kind of you know use these younger people to feed the old white people you know <laughs> to 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 use them as the as as the food for the you know, for the people that were at the the nursing home, but uh, boy, was I wrong! <laughs> it was quite a twist that yeah. I didn't didn't see coming at all. That's for sure. Or a Hunger Games, or 
you know, underground prison fighting yeah. type thing. Uh, but yeah, this, this movie yeah. is political, horror, comedy, a little bit of sci-fi, I, or mm-hmm. not necessarily sci-fi. Well, yeah. But it's that, that branch of horror. Uh, I, I think some of the, some of the stuff is given away uh, with, you say, like posters. Posters mm-hmm. on the wall in JP's room. Oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's what? JP and his sister Lily. And yeah, it pretty much kicks off with those news clips. And then look at these happy mm-hmm. people. And then boom. And what? Uh, the place is run by... Eddie, uh, I forget. Yeah, but what... I couldn't figure out. See, that 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 was what I I really couldn't figure that character Eddie out. Like, was he just like a worker there, or did he have some more investment in it? You know, and then you've got certain characters that start out one way, and then they kind of I, I I don't know if they if they get corrupted along the way, or if they sort of had that intention in the back of their mind to begin with. Again, I'm kind of skirting around it a little bit because I don't want (laughs) to say too much for people that haven't seen the movie. But there's definitely some twists of characters toward the end of the movie that I didn't see coming. And I'm almost hate to say this, but I'm wondering if there's even like a little bit of the because, you know, even in the Hispanic community, there there was a huge um, I I guess that big fallout, if you'll remember, um, the uh ah oh man the musical that came out a couple of years ago and there was a big reaction that they only used light skin latinos in it oh. rather than um you know island uh based or darker skin latinos do you know the one that i'm talking about i think it was the same director that did hamilton that made oh, the movie oh uh what lin manuel miranda uh, yes did and hamilton I- that's right. Yeah, that's right. What was... else did he do? In the Heights? Was it In the Heights? Um, that came out two years it, ago. Yep, it was. Uh, it was In the Heights, and there was a there there was a pretty big controversy about that because uh, all of the characters that he used were, I guess, like incredibly light skinned. Okay, and so, I think I know, remember hearing about that. Yeah, it wasn't very inclusive as it turns out. And then, you know, of course he came out with an apology and, you know, that wasn't intentional. And yeah, I'm sure it wasn't um, because, you know, it was from his point of view, but I don't know if maybe there was a little bit of that in this movie. Um, did, did you catch any of that possibly, or was that maybe just something that um, j- just to kind of explain for the, for the people listening, I, um, I am married to a Hispanic woman and um, you know, her family, like especially the older generations pretty much speak only Spanish. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely um, in touch with that community more than your average blonde white guy might be. (laughs) So um, I don't know. These are just some observations that I've made and I've, and I've certainly heard talk about that, that there can, there can be kind of like classism within like, you know, um, lighter skin, darker skin, kind of the same way there is with society in general. Um, but it is a thing, man. And I, I don't know. I, I felt a few vibes of that maybe going on with this movie, you know, not to say too much. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Uh, of, oh, what was that? Uh, oh, there was, there was the one great joke that the guy made when he was being interviewed. He said, so are you putting me in here because I'm Hispanic or because I'm black? <laughs> Oh, Big Mac. That's yeah, I, I like Big Mac. Yeah, Big Mac movie. is great. <laughs> he, he was pretty funny in, in through, through, throughout the movie. I think the characters were pretty good. Some of the people, like, I, in a way, it's caricatures, but also in a way, mm-hmm. it does represent real people. Like Jenna Ortega, what, what does she say in her interview? full-time activist, part-time political prisoner with the purple streak in her hair. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, she was a spitfire. Yeah, she was She was fun in this. I, she was 
Mm-hmm. What, what this was made. Yeah, I mean, she's been working hard, it seems, lately. but Because this came out in July last year in the States. I don't know where else it came out I, and when. But, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I was trying to think of when we were talking about the, the different sometimes in for sometimes imposed and sometimes internal ways that people think about uh gradients of pigmentation uh there was this mm-hmm. book yep. i read uh so long ago that all i really remember is the premise what it's called and who wrote it but it was called uh the autobiography uh, autobiography of an ex-colored man by uh james weldon johnson and it was about living the life trying to pass as Caucasian because of racism in America. Uh, when was it? I think it was published in the early 1900s. If not between 1900 and 1910, it was like 1912, oh, wow. 1915. Okay. Um, Jeez, wow. I'm trying to wrap my head around what the world must have been like that, you know, that long ago. That's... That's more than just a generational jump. That's like, um, that's over a century ago. Yeah. It boggles the mind, man. And I mean, I, it's like, yeah, you, you've got a lot more regular life experience uh, than might be expected of a, of a guy of your background and pigmentation. And uh, a lot of the, you know, ism, that I see in my regular life is I have a niece and nephew who have a black dad and a white mom. And one is more fair skinned than the other and noticeably gets treated different by society than uh, the, the darker sibling. You see, yep, yep. It's, you see that it's a real thing, man. You yeah. see it all the time. Not, not by family, I, you know, which is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as you know, That's as as an uncle, yeah. and as they get older, we have different kinds of conversations, yeah. and and that is a trip. It's yeah, it's. I mean, it's and it's something that I think a lot of people don't think about. I was thinking about this the other day with how police brutality uh, which exists in this movie so it's still on topic exists in this country and i was trying to count Mm -hmm. how many times without fear i spoke back to cops Mm -hmm. i understand what you're saying i do yeah i there's a i totally get it man (laughs) um but and uh, surely you don't you you, you've got to remember the the Eddie Murphy skit from Saturday Night Live where he uh, dressed up as a white guy and got onto a onto a uh, city bus. Have you ever seen this? <laughs> no, no. Is I oh, I I keep, just keep picturing some of his characters in Coming to America. You know what you you got you got to look this skit up, man. After, after we're done recording or when you get time, just. Uh, probably SNL Eddie Murphy white man bus would okay. probably pull it up. Okay. So he's like, uh, okay. So, you know, they film it as an outside skit. It's not like on set. It's like one of those where they do the SNL short films. And so he's in New York city and he's like, all right, I'm all dressed up as a white man now. And I'm about to get on a bus. Let's see if I'm treated any differently. And it's just hilarious, man. He like walks onto the bus and pulls his money out. The driver turns and says, put that away, man. What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) And it goes from there. It's, it is fucking hilarious. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to check, check that out. Cause it's, it's so often in comedy and film and entertainment. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I of course like my popcorn brainless thing, but it's it's important and it's special when artists use their medium to convey larger problems and not just conveying larger goods, but when they address problems that people <laughs> try their fucking hardest to ignore. 
Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, because it's so much more comfortable to just ignore it than to try to face it head on or, or God forbid, you know, sacrifice, you know, any of your own comforts to try to to help your fellow man that might not look the way you do or your fellow woman, you know. And, you know, these kids in the movie are only have each other to help each other because they're surrounded by a system that's surrounded by a system that's surrounded by a system mm -hmm. that is doing everything it can to undo them in all sorts of ways in this movie. And I don't yeah, want to oversell it. I guess if you're listening, if you're this far into an episode of this show, this movie is for you and you may not like it, but it's worth, you know, or it might not be your favorite movie, but if you like what assassination nation or the purge movies, well, I mean, even, even get out. I mean, there's a little flavor of get out here. There's a flavor of get out. There's an us poster on the guy's wall too. Um, yep, that's right. And a and a and a AOC Hope poster. <laughs> yep. And uh what Attack the Block, which if I oh, remember Oh, yes. And I rewatched has... that movie just the other night. Okay, and that has class issues. <laughs> class struggle. Yeah. It really does. And then it now that one's a very hopeful. Um I think that's a very hopeful illustration of those class class issues because they tend to overcome, but there you go. See, right? It's come. It's almost like the only way we can overcome that and all come together is is if there's an outside threat that we have to, you know, band together to to get rid of. So, like, if aliens invaded the way Philip always thinks is going to happen, and he swears <laughs> that they're already here every fucking week, um, then yeah, you might actually see us uh, getting along a little better. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, it's like I mean, you've. <clears throat> You've seen The Watchmen, or right? You've sure. Seen, okay. Like, well, I've read the com. I read the comics and much preferred the comics to the movie. <laughs> but I, 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 I see what you're getting at. Yeah. Uh, uh, same thing. Give, give Earth a, something else to fear besides each other, and watch Unity form. Right. Well, we we experienced it for about three days after 9/11. Well. It's that unless you were from somewhere in the Middle East. Well, yeah, there was a lot of go, you know, go back home, you towel head going on. That that's true. People, yeah, there. But America forgot to punch each other in the face for a while. Well, no, because <laughs> American <laughs> Americans were getting attacked by other Americans sure. because they were trying to show unity with America. Because America. That's, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but but yes, it, it will have to take an Independence Day, War of the Worlds, Watchmen, Attack the Block sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then even then. Somebody will be saying that it's, you know. Chinese people's fault or. You know, or uh, the real problem isn't the alien invasion, it's health care for the poor. Or what are we going to do about our new alien overlords when Social Security becomes insolvent? Mm -hmm. That's, I don't know, that, I, that's a bit rambly, but I kind of feel like the best hope for this country, if it remains a country is either, you know, the, the that generation of politicians getting Thanos. <laughs> just, just all it takes is a snap. Then just, just <laughs> poof and then dust in the wind. But I mean, there's right. already, the next, the next generation, it, it'll get less. It'll it'll be lessened. But I mean, what fuck? Marjorie Green is in her thirties. 
Lauren Boebert is pretty young. There's a bunch of that's the scary part. Yeah, yeah, that's the scary part. All these young politicians. Um, and the name escapes me right now, but the guy who just uh made up all the lies about his background and Oh, if um, if his if his or... real name is George Santos. George Santos. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, it, like, it, and then he, he was coming up with these things like saying, well, I didn't mean to say I was Jewish. I meant to say that I was Jew, you know, ish. ish. <laughs> um, it, what a lot of people know him as Anthony DeVolder or DeVolde. I've, I've heard mm-hmm. it. I've seen it written more than I've heard it said, but I think sure. that was that was when he was. uh yeah, I, I, have you heard the QAnon story about him? No, the no, the the last story I heard about him was his days of being a drag queen down um, in South America. Heard, yeah, I haven't heard the QAnon story. Do do tell. Well, from my brief understanding, is the ongoing narrative from the QAnon folk is that he is an agent of good for Donald Trump fighting against the deep state, deep undercover. That is why he has so many aliases and past lives. Oh, he's an undercover cop, so to speak. Undercover warrior against the deep state. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So he fights the cops because they don't like the cops right now. Except yeah. for if, well, yeah, they don't like the cops right now because of the whole January 6th thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and and all, I think it stemmed from the DOJ has asked the FEC, uh, the Federal Election, is, is it committee or commission? Um. Uh, commission sounds right. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, it stands <laughs> for commission. Yeah, the FC, FEC is the Federal Election Commission, which <clears throat> has been investigating Santos about the questionable. Like he had no money, and then all of a sudden he loaned himself about a million dollars mm-hmm. for his campaign, and then he keeps okay. amending his filing, saying, "Well, actually, it was less than that." Uh, that it was just for me, but the Department of Justice has asked the FEC to hold off on investigating him. And to the Q, that means that what he's doing fighting the deep state is working. To regular legal analysts, it means the DOJ is probably criminally investigating him for something, and they want the FEC to hold off because that's a civil suit. Which can go, which, uh, the word, it tr- <laughs> it's trumped by a criminal charge. Um, okay. But that is, that was this week the DOJ asked the FEC to sort of hold off. But they didn't say why. So it's either, it's because he is beating the deep state on behalf of Donald Trump and all of the pizza gators and stuff. Or... Mm-hmm. They have an ongoing investigation, whether about the if there's been some sort of wire fraud or other things. I don't know Uh, the law. I've been (laughs) been told a lot of times that I should have been a lawyer uh, by people that argue with me. But I would go cross eyed and stupid trying to learn all of that shit. I know enough to be a podcaster about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, uh, maybe he should just, maybe he should just follow, uh, like what other people do and, 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 and report earning exactly $641,000 on a business and having exactly $641,000 to the penny in expenses for that same business. That, that would probably work. Yeah, that or what <laughs> uh, there, were, there were a lot of. $199 charges, which is $1, sure. $1 less that if it was $200, you would have to report what it was for. And f- Oh, really? Okay. See, I didn't even hear about all that. 
Yes, there, there. His campaign did a lot of odd billing. That was 199 for this, 199 for this, 199 for this, 199 for that. And sure. That is, yeah. yeah, that's just below the ridiculous campaign laws that we have, especially after Citizens United was overturned. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, I mean, it's already so easy to legally buy politicians and elections. But they, the people that do fuck up, are such fuck ups that they can't even crime right, or you know they can't even be basic American mm-hmm. politicians within the boundaries of the law, for whatever fucking reason. Um, sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, George Santos. <laughs> How do we get talking about him? God only knows, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> went down that rabbit hole somehow man well it's it's all the thing he well oh uh speaking of uh well i mean he is basically stealing a government salary right now um mm-hmm. but the yeah the lies told to appear cooler like people in the movie do uh but what he said that he had a a handful of staff members that were killed in the Pulse nightclub shooting. Uh, We might have got Mm -hmm. talking about him because he said that his mom died in 9-11, even though she died in, I think, 2015 or 2016. Um, Pulling on those, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the fake sympathies or the real sympathies or trying to pull in solidarity for things like that. Oh, uh, okay. I got gotcha. you. I yeah. I I get most of my news from uh, <laughs> from from Saturday Night Live's weekend update. <laughs> and I noticed that they they had a joke where he he showed up and said that he uh, he said yeah my mom died in nine eleven twice. <laughs> so not too much of a stretch, I guess. Yeah, that that's that that is turning on the the that joke. Um. He's said so much shit. It's been hard to keep track. And it almost, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, he would be, he's so dumb and unlikable. He would be the James Bond of QAnon people or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, it's so many traceable lies and about dumb stuff too. Uh, What he said that he went to a college that he didn't go to. Said he won a volleyball tournament at the college that he didn't go to, claiming he worked for companies that have never heard of him. Uh, I mean, also sort of tied to the movie in a way. A small independent paper in New York uncovered some of this shit before the election. But nobody paid attention to it until the New York Times wrote about it after the election. I was just I was just about to ask you that. Like if 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 all this stuff was so easy to find out and document, why did it come out after the guy got elected? Did is that part of this this game that a lot of the Democrats are playing where we want the kookiest, stupidest, craziest person to run against us so we have a better chance to win like that? Witch's brew that they've been doing lately with actually funneling money into some of those election campaigns, or how, how could how could something like this happen? Well, it's a, I I think that would have something to do with it, but also it's state. Well, it, it is federal, but it's the House, uh, it was Senate Senate races get more coverage. There, I mean, there are what four hundred and thirty five seats in the House. So it's spread a little thin and people want, I I don't know. It, I think part of it was the New York Republican party has been trying to make inroads in what is largely a Democrat leading state electorally. Sure. sure. So they mm-hmm. got themselves who they thought was a gay Jewish semi-liberal Republican that's still conservative. So yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Might you overlook a few things. <laughs> you are just totally full of shit, and you make us look like shit. And now you right. have put us, set us back in the we're not monsters initiative that the Republican Party is trying to do in places that they have to pretend. That makes perfect sense, man. Because in, in this information age, that somebody had to know all this stuff, right? Somehow. Yeah, I can't There's remember nowhere. the name of the paper. But yeah, it was a paper that existed in his district, in his congressional district. That okay. was like, well, this... This doesn't line up, and this is questionable, <laughs> something and some, something's <laughs> up. But they are un, underfunded, and, I mean, you know how the, the news cycle is yeah. now. Sure. If, if it sure. doesn't snag the whatever, the – I don't even know what, what how, to, how to say it. like. Well, yeah, and that and that's the problem too, right? Because some of these, you know, smaller independent, you know, type newspapers, you, you run the risk now of confusing. Some people do run the risk of confusing them with, you know, like J. Jonah Jameson in the new Spider-Man movies <laughs> or uh, Infowars or something like that, right? Like, it, it's just kind of it's like it, it's all, we're in a point where there's so much information coming out. It's like. Who do you believe? What do you believe? You know, and yeah, I, I, I could see that. I could see how it kind of flew under the radar until the guy was actually uh, elected. Ah, found it. The North Shore Leader. Have you ever heard of it? Nope. Never in my life have I heard of the North Shore Leader. It's a paper from Long Island. Okay. And they, uh, yeah, they... They just nobody nobody paid attention, and until until afterwards, I don't. I'm not really sure if it was overconfidence or just I don't know. Because he also he ran for office before at least one time and did not win. Right. So I'm I'm not sure. I'm I can't. Why? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm me. I we at Psycho Semantic were not really aware of George Santos until after he got elected, but I was dealing with all of the nonsense that was going on here. We had our last election, uh, using districts and maps that were ruled unconstitutional by our state supreme court five times, and yet and yet still being used, right? Yep, yep, still being used. Very interesting. Um, so I I admit I was not aware of George Santos until the story about him hit my Twitter feed. Uh, so... Trying to think when the first time was I, I heard something about it. I, I, I think it was probably, you know, right after he had been elected. It seemed like the, I don't know, it seems like everything opened up at that point. Like once it was too late, <laughs> it's all of right. a sudden all this information comes to light you know yeah like well it's too late and then it also i think got a little less attention from like i said the i mean there are numerous new york republicans i think this the republican uh whatever group like the statewide republicans of new york have asked mm -hmm. for him to resign or at least the Republican caucus of his district okay. asked for him to resign. But McCarthy, quote unquote, I mean, technically Speaker of the House McCarthy. Sure. Gave sure. away Puppet most of, most McCarthy. of his power. Yeah. He right. has George Santos's support. And he has very little support, so he is trying to keep him happy and safe. Because okay, if, he, so, if he resigned, they would have to have another election. Yeah, I was going to – okay, you answered my question. I was going to ask, so what would happen if he stepped down? If he did the, you know, the honorable thing and said, you know what? You got me. <laughs> 
what, what you said it, it would be another election, but it, would it be an election just within the Republican Party and they would keep that or would it would it have to go back to a general election? Uh, if I believe it would be a special election from both parties. So not, that not just makes a huge difference, right? Right. And so that that distrust is there now. Uh, in some places, people get, yeah, uh, it, I don't think it's ever for, oh, no, I think there are places where the governor picks the replacement for okay. the remainder of a political office. But I'm pretty sure in New York, it would have to be a special election. And so two things, two immediate consequences would be if he resigned immediately that would reduce the Republican majority by one one vote, like the overall Republican majority by one vote. And it's already yep. ex extremely slim majority. And okay, it, would, yeah. it would reduce McCarthy's support by one vote. Yeah. And if the re yeah, if the Republicans lost or, or, or risked right losing the seat altogether, that that's a huge deal right now with as close as everything is. Yeah. And as fractured as the party seems to be in, in, um, in aim, you know, there, <laughs> I feel like it seems again that I only get what I see them say. I'm not mm -hmm. deep in, I'm not entrenched with the Republican voter. Uh, I've talked to many, but th there is the what the Freedom Caucus, which is Marjorie Green and all those yahoos. And they want to impeach Joe Biden and get Hunter Biden's dick pics. And <laughs> I don't even know what else. And then there's the older school Republicans that want to cut social security and medicare and get rebolster the fossil fuel industry and stuff like that. And sure, yeah, open open up open up monopolies again and uh, you know, go back go back to the way things should be, right? Yeah. And uh, McCarthy is from the he's a little bit from both, but he has definitely given power to the Marjorie okay. Green group. Um he, he oh god he's, he's such a shit but uh the i think it's uh yeah there there are the independent there's uh, the house is 222 republicans 213 democrats not a huge margin no uh less than 10 that's mm -hmm. that's 9 if my math is okay, but I am part of the American <laughs> education system. Uh, and if Santos went away, that would be uh -huh. eight. Well, yeah, conceivably. Or a, or another Republican could win, right? I mean, well, if there's he, always that. Yeah, I don't know if he would step. I, I don't think he can step down after the mm -hmm. election, after the special election. So for, okay. a, for the time being, it would be immediately reduced. And then it could jump back up or it could go one in the other way. But also uh, there when you have the vote in the House, if people are out sick or if people are in the bathroom or if people are out, I mean, ha what? I feel like 80 percent of being in the House is fundraising for your party. So if they're out fundraising, that changes the majorities, too. For votes, so you have to time it when people aren't out, and that can be an issue, especially with the entrenched politicians, where, uh, like with the the split Senate, there were when you know an eighty something year old person gets COVID, right. they can't, they can't go into work and they might die, and. Uh, like speaking of the Democrats, what Diane Feinstein, <laughs> she was what head of the Senate Judiciary Committee. If I remember right, she's 89. 
Yeah, not a, not a lot of spring chickens. Um, so like you said, it would be kind of good if the dust blew away. But then again, worried about some of these. That's how we got talking about Santos. That's how we got on that. Got on the that young path, ones. Man. I was worried about these young, weird <laughs> YouTube age, <laughs> TikTok age, far right, incel. I, I could go on and on. <laughs> There's a lot of scary people out there that are young too, man. <laughs> so in in government, it's a bit more lopsided because of the the weighted scales of power. But if you pull it back a little bit to thinking that elections matter, which they kind of do. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to vote. Got to vote in every election. I, I, I was brought up that way and we try to bring our kids up that way too it's it's easy it's it's easy to do well it's getting harder and harder every day but (laughs) in theory it's easy to do shouldn't take that long even though people are making it harder and making it take long but as people and as a country i mean progressive or leftist or forward ideas are gaining more and more popularity the f- the younger you ask. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like progress is inevitable. It just takes a long time sometimes. And when the scales of power are slanted, it can feel like it's never going to happen. But eventually, progress always progresses. Yeah, you're right. If you, if you let yourself start start feeling too down about setbacks and stuff like that. But then again, I mean, like you've got, look at some of the stuff that's going on now, man. You've got people that are being, you know, brutalized by uh, so-called law enforcement, you know, something happened recently that was just like, never should have been allowed to happen. It's, it's systemic, man. It's just the way that it's set up. And it, it does get frustrating for people that, that want to have a better life for, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 easy if all you to to theoretic to think about it theoretically. Just be like, yeah, you know, I mean, a generation or two from now, mm-hmm. if the planet hasn't exploded, people are going to have it better. <laughs> but right now, right. Yeah. That's it yeah. Oh god. <laughs> it's American carnage in a different way. <laughs> It's it's just getting and I, I I mean, police have been beating people to death since police existed. And it's only gotten easier to act with impunity. Uh, the longer the qualified immunity is entrenched, the longer that lawsuit settlements come out of the city budget and not out of the police budget, the longer a lot of things just keep going because that's the way it's been Mm -hmm. instead of, but we've got cheap hamburgers. We do. And it tastes almost like the real thing. (laughs) Is that too much? Is that, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, we're, I mean, we could talk about this forever. We have gone a bit over an hour. I don't know where this conversation is going. But is there anything that we haven't really said in our semi-spoiler-free discussion about American carnage? Before? There was actually, yeah, there was actually one small thing that may or may not have been meant to be part of the movie or not. I'm not really sure. But I did kind of get some weird vibes in there, like especially when they were, you know, like we said, interviewing them and then bringing them all into work. And they, you know, they were sitting almost like in a classroom environment, like this is how it's going to be. And then, you know, you've got uh, you've got the guy there. Would you say his name is Eddie? That's uh, kind of like running things and say, this is how it's going to be. And this is this is what you're going to do. I got I got a little bit of a vibe, maybe, of like the re-education stuff that uh, the Europeans did with the natives, where they kind of oh, would change okay. their name to John Smith or John Brown instead of uh, 
you know, their born their name they're born with. <laughs> Did you get a little bit of that vibe, maybe? I could see that. I could see the what the residential schools. Sure, sure. Yeah, but where they're finding all or all sorts of mass graves beneath now. Um I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, with those ice detention facilities, mm -hmm. most people don't know what happens there or what has happened there. And there have been horrible things that have happened to people. And a lot of them are licensed by private companies. A lot of them are That's in right. weird That's fucking right. places, uh, places that are not meant to house people. A lot of, like I said, a lot of acting with impunity because as people idolize police, it, ICE is like America cops or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and th their fans are the Joe Arpaios and the Stephen Millers and the hard right are big fans of ICE, even more so than... Police and I mean, policing has existed in some form or another, you know, since before America was America. Sure. And brought over by the colonizers. But I I, I keep going back to I people talk about ICE like it it's an American institution. It's only been around for 20 fucking years. Mm -hmm. It could go away. They still policed the border before 2003. They just didn't have another military budget for it. And they didn't recruit the type of people that will raid a birthday party or something or that will yeah. separate children from their families and just not give a fuck. Or and it's just the dehumanization of people. And sometimes the most vulnerable, the huddled masses. Right. And, ah, yeah. This, having ice be part of the villainy of this movie was really good for me. Yeah, it was right on the nose, man. They they literally had the, the jackets and everything. So, you know, that's uh, a lot of the time these science fiction movies and these horror movies will sort of be more parody like. But that was that was pretty much spot on. Yeah, so I think we are wrapping up, and that's probably a good wrap-up point. I mean, the American Carnage, I feel like it's online rating <laughs> does it a disservice, but I mean, it's not as solid of a movie as some of the... Purge or Soylent Green or Attack the Block or something. Sure, it's sure. It's a low-budget indie horror comedy with a couple faces that you know, at the at the time, a couple faces that you've seen before, mm -hmm. but things you have seen before. Yeah, true. Not a, not a whole lot that was brand new, but it it was a it was an interesting watch. Again, like I said, there were some twists that happened there at the end that I in the third act that I certainly wasn't expecting. So it was interesting just to see something that was different from what my mind created before I saw it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I, I would recommend this to anybody who's made it this far in this episode. Yeah. And let's face it, man, we've got kids now that are going to be Jenna Ortega completists, you know, just like um, old people like me or Jack Nicholson completists. I'll go back and watch every single shitty old fucking Roger Corman movie that he was ever in just because it's Jack <laughs> Nicholson, you know? <laughs> That's, yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, American Carnage, it, it's, it's, it's real and it's not real. I, <laughs> or, I don't know. It's <laughs> great way to put it. A lot of it hits close to home. Uh, if you care about, these the issues that they talk about in the movie and if you care about people human beings if, yeah and if you like a little bit of uh a little a bit of horror comedy 
Mm-hmm. And who and, doesn't? And who doesn't? So, yeah, I mean, that was, I think we talked about a lot of stuff, and I think some of it made sense. And I want to thank you, Lance, for helping me talk this out. It's been something that's been, you know, on both of our minds quite often, and we haven't really had a conversation about it for ever. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the invite, and I I would say that you're uh, you're well overdue for uh, for joining us on the horror returns. Yeah, I mean, I I look forward to it, and thank you, and what we did. Everybody, go check out the Thanks Killing episode. <laughs> um, can't miss that one. Can't miss that one. <laughs> local local legend movie, Thanks Killing. And, uh, but I, I think there are more well-known movies that we might discuss next time. Who knows? All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get a schedule to you. We just, uh, we just covered a couple of Brandon Cronenberg movies. So that was a fun week that, that show should be up in a day or two. Nice. And, uh, what's that infinity pool? Is that one of them? Yeah, we did, uh, infinity pool and possessor. Ooh, I've seen Possessor. <laughs> I have not yet seen Infinity Pool. Hey, you might be surprised with some of the ratings some of the people give, or you may not be. <laughs> <laughs> um, you never uh, know with the with that crazy Cronenberg family. Right. Yeah. yeah. So look forward to that. I look forward to conversing with you further. And thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks everybody for listening. And uh Here's 2023. It's almost an election year again, so <laughs> never get out, never get away from it. But until then, he did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Yep. And cover. They took.